So we came up with about a 60 million ton uh, at 1.5% uh, copper equivalent. So that combines the copper, nickel, and the, the palladium. And that's all at surface. These are, you know, two large deposits. They're each about Those two are large deposits. Yes. Yeah, strike length. And we think there's a lot of potential as these are layered intrusions. Greg Farron, PTX Metals. How are you? I'm good. Andy, how are you? Nice seeing you again. It's really nice seeing you again. Um, to all of our viewers that will watch this and listen to it on the podcast, Greg and I were at a conference in, um, in Florida about a week and a half ago, I want to say. And I, uh, I invited Greg on the show. I am not an investor as of yet, as of this dropping, but I'm very intrigued. And I want to have that conversation again with Greg about his company, PTX Metals. Let's start with first, give me your background, and then we're going to go 30,000 foot view into your project. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So I'm based in Toronto, uh, Canada. I worked in uh, corporate finance and trading um, at, at some of the banks and the stock exchange for about 10 years, based in Toronto. They're involved in a lot of financing of the, you know, these junior energy mining companies in Canada. And I worked at the stock exchange as well. And then I also uh, began working in, in corporate development. I worked at Laramide. We helped build, I think, what is one of the uh, more interesting uranium companies in the sector today. I was also involved with a company called Treasury Metals, which was a spinoff of Laramide. And we created quite an interesting uh, gold development opportunity over 3 million ounces, which is now Next Gold. I was a CEO of that company and we had a, uh, you know, a good track record getting that federal EA completed and completing that Goldmund uh, merger to create a, a large development story. Yes. Yeah. So you were the CEO of Next Gold. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it was Treasury at the time, but Treasury. Just, got it. I was, okay. That was just news to me. Well, fantastic. Great company. And yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like the company there. And certainly, uh, they're moving along, uh, quite well. And you know, that, that property is quite interesting because you're right on the trans Canada in Ontario. So very, uh, very buildable project. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my background working in, you know, building, uh, exploration companies, putting a good team together, good projects, getting them financed. And, and now, uh, I've been doing that with, uh, with PTX over the last, uh, several years. Awesome. Let me interrupt you again. So you got my attention because you were with Next Gold, and it sounds like, please correct me if I'm wrong, that it's time, it was time to, to do your own thing. And that's where we're at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was on the board of PTX and, uh, you know, Next Gold got to the point where they need to bring in, you know, an experienced mind building team. Right. That isn't my, my skill set, and I'm not interested in doing that, but I, I think I, left at, uh, you know, a very well-financed company and, you know, very good hands, very good shareholders. And then this company, uh, I was on the board and the founder wanted to retire. So it was a good, uh, skill set because I, I have a capital markets background. He's a very strong geologist and engineer worked at tech and we put in this copper nickel project, which is now our flagship asset in the Northern part of Ontario. But we've also got a, a very nice uh, gold uh, portfolio in the Abitibi camp with a, a partner called Than Camp. Mm -hmm. So if I can interrupt you again, I mean, this is good because I'm becoming even much more interested here just for our viewers. And again, um, let me stress, I'm not a buyer yet. Um, I really like your background that you come from the capital markets. And what's really important to this, you obviously then understand financing and Anytime you have to, you're starting a mine, <laughs> trying to get a mine built, it is so money intensive that I want to get to that in a second. But I personally prefer betting on a background. You want a great team, you want a great geologist and somebody in the capital markets. But if I were to pick one, it would be capital markets. Yeah, just so our viewers know. Uh, just my two cents. But uh, yeah, go yeah. ahead. So very, very impressive. Great. Um, let's talk about the project here. It's in Ontario. So tell me about what you got. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our W2 project, it's a copper nickel project. It's quite a large deposit. 
And we've one, one thing the market is sort of surprised with and what I've been trying to communicate is there's been a lot of historical drilling. This isn't a mine that's been in production, but there's a lot of good operators like Inco, a company called Aurora Platinum, uh, that did a lot of drilling earlier on, on this project. And then we've had the benefit of putting it all back together. Most recently, we acquired the large resource right within the center of the property that we didn't own. And then we've begun doing our, our own drilling. Uh, it's also got a large uh, precious metals component to it as well, using a fairly attractive cutoff or a fairly high cutoff for the resource, which we did by way of expiration target. And I'll explain what that is later. Um, you get almost a gram per ton of uh, palladium uh, combined with, with the gold and the platinum. So you get, a, you know, it's, it's a copper nickel project, but it's got a very nice uh, precious metal uh, component to it. Okay, we'll can the you ask the question first? Sure. So, and again, uh, please, please forgive me. Um, so palladium, copper and nickel, but predominantly copper and nickel, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the, the biggest way in is copper. And then the, uh, the PGs have a big, uh, weighing of the resource as well as, as the nickel. Yeah. And for all of our viewers to, um, that are listening to this, I just dropped a, go find it. I just dropped an interview with Rick, Rick rule about a week ago and I'm name dropping here, but we talked about hated assets, if you would, in S and we love hate, um, and assets that we're looking to get exposure to. And we mention plate, flame, copper, and nickel in that order. So if you're looking to get exposure into hated assets, this might be something to look at. Okay, please go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's in the Northern part of Ontario. So the closest operating mine would be Muscle White owned by Newmont. And we're, we're further East, North of Thunder Bay. Um, it's a newer mining camp that's opening up with the government, uh, of Ontario and Canada. There's a big push to develop another large copper nickel camp. Um, as you know, Ontario has the, the, the mining camp called Sudbury, which has been mining nickel and copper for, for, for decades. And, uh, so they're looking to develop this newer camp w and which they expect the resources and discoveries will, uh, will increase as the infrastructure comes in and then they'll still benefit from a lot of that existing infrastructure in Sudbury. So we're at the point now where we're just going to con continue now that we've got it consolidated and permitted and began doing exploration. We've put together a very good uh, team. We've hired a lot of people from Wailu, uh, which is the big owner of the, um, Eagle's Dust deposit, just west, east of us, and owned by a company called Fortescue, which is a large iron ore producer in Australia. And they have a, a base metal division called Wailu. And, um, yeah, so that, that's sort of the stage and that, that's the work we're doing right now. Excellent. So a couple of questions here is Newmont, that property is Newmont mining up there. Yeah. They are mining. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. The next question is, um, your drill results. Can you share any of those yet? Yeah. Well, we, I can, I can share with you. Um, so the resource we announced, which was done by expiration target. So, and it was. What that means is the full resource, um, in terms of the, you know, the due diligence and the modeling and the independent, uh, engineering firm that did the work, but what, by doing an expiration target, it allowed us to use some of that historical drilling that Inco did, for example, that we don't have the drill core on, although we do have the assay. So I just wanted to you know, note that. So we came up with about a 60 million ton, uh, at 1.5% uh, copper equivalent. So that combines the copper, nickel, and the, the palladium. And that's all at surface. These are, you know, two large deposits. They're each about Those two are large kilometers. deposits, yes. Yeah, right. strike length. And we think there's a lot of potential as these are layered intrusions, like the Bushfeld or Eagle's Nest, and you generally find other layers of mineralization. It's flat line. And then from the drill program, um, what we did is we didn't own the large deposit at the time of doing, uh, the drill program. Um, but we drilled these undrilled conductors and we hit a mineralization in three or four different cases, you know, hundred meters of, uh, around 1% copper equivalent within that you get, you know, higher grade sections of 10 to 20 meters in these different zones. Mm -hmm. And then we also did a couple confirmation drill holes along the Aurora platinum deposit as well, just to confirm some of that historical drilling. 
And um, so what we'd like to do uh, in our next program is now that we own that main deposit or inco drilled, we'd like to do some infill drilling along that deposit, just again, to confirm the historical numbers, extend the drilling deeper, because we believe there's probably another layer uh, below this open pit, because there have, has been uh, mineralization ending in higher grade uh, based on the shallow drilling. And then we also want to just continue drilling more of those undrilled conductors as we think that that area can get much larger at surface and could be potentially, uh, you know, 200, 300 million tons. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Um, it sounds really great as far as what you're so far hitting or what you think you have. Mm -hmm. Um, my next question to you is let's talk about corporate share structure. If you would, the share stock share stru structure, what are you currently trading at and how many shares upstanding fully diluted do you have? Yeah. Yeah, so we currently trade in Canada on the Canadian Securities Exchange, and we're in the process of moving to the Venture Exchange, which will happen in the next, uh, you know, before the end of the year. We have 92 million shares issued um, in total, and we also have a fair, fairly good uh, trading uh, volume on, in the U.S. market under the symbol PANXF as well. That's been improving the past, uh, say, 12 months. And we've got an interesting shareholder base. We've got about 20% of our shares held in sort of long-term uh, family offices, institutions in Europe that I've done a lot of work with. A number of mining companies, Fancamp, uh, Nextcold, Alamos, a number of others own about 20%. And then the board, uh, the founder, a number of our directors own about 20% as well. And then we've got a fairly large Canadian re retail base in Quebec and Alberta. So in total, we've got about a thousand shareholders and now you know, as we've, I think we've done a good job de-risking the company, adding a lot of new shareholders, adding this new, new project. And now we're looking to start, start attracting institutional investors as sort of the next phase of work. Um, so again, talking to my viewers and listeners, I really like to see at least 40% into the strong hands. And that would be either a uh, board or, um, you know, just large funds, if you would. And you have a 60%, you also have 92 million shares, which is, you seem pretty tight here. So, which is good. So let me, so that would check my box, but let me talk to you about um, dilution and just to all of our listeners, dilution, every, especially somebody, um, grays and PTX metal size, they're going to ha feel free to interrupt me great. They're going to have to dilute if they want to continue drilling and to take this mine into production. What you really want to know is what the, um, what the dilution, if you would, well, how they're going to raise money, where that is going. And then, um, and you might not be able to answer this great, but you want to do it higher than where the market's at, uh, or you want to keep on doing it higher as the stock climbs. So talk to me about what is the plan here moving forward, um, drilling holes and where would if you can talk about it, where would the next money rage, uh, around what time would the next money raise happen? And, um, where would that be going to, if you can talk about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, th those are all good questions. Um, and I feel like we're, we're in a much stronger position now. Um, you know, for the one reason you alluded to is the fact we do have a, the shares now in, in good hands. So I can be very selective now, especially in an improving market and with that large resource. So we'll, you know, we'll start trying to finance with some corporates and institutions. And that's sort of who we're speaking with right now, because we would like to get out and get a couple of those in, involved. And there is interest to do a drill program in January. It, it, it's a good time to be drilling up at, at W2. So that would be the timing of the next financing. And the other thing we're, we're looking to do as well is we've got a lot of other assets in the company. We've got a very nice gold portfolio called South Timmins. And we think along with our partner, that we could get that spun out, um, which we're working on, which would bring, could bring in a lot of capital to, uh, to PTX as well. So that's one way of, you know, either creating shareholder value, uh, by giving a dividend or having a large equity position. So those are kind of the, the two things we're working on both, uh, bringing in capital through a financing, which we'll, we'll be very careful of because I think now the, the stock's trading at about a 12 to 15 million market cap. So. You know, if you had a hundred million market cap, it'd be much easier to r really go drill this project. Um, but 
we think as we get another phase or two of drilling done, that'll add a lot of value uh, to the market cap as his resource is confirmed and increased in size. So, yeah, so I, I, I think the dilution, you know, is necessary, but obviously we will be very careful about how we yep. raise the money and when. Yep. That's music to my ears. Um, do we have, should investors be aware of, um, any news? I mean, you can't say it so you can, but from now until the end of the year or January, should they, what should they be, a pe be paying attention to? What do you have? Cause really a stock your size, what's going to really move it is news coming out. For, yeah. What do they, do they have anything that you can say that they can uh, hang on to here for the next couple of months? Yeah. Well, I mean. I'd say there, there, there's three things we're working on right now. One, a W2, we will have an, a, an update out in the next uh, week or two on the work we're doing. Uh, we are doing some metallurgy work, which is very important to better understand the recoveries of these, you know, this type of disseminated uh, system. You also get massive and semi-massive uh, sulfide. So just better understanding that. And we've built, I think, a very good uh, team. Uh, so we'll announce, you know, those new members to the team and then highlight the work we want to do going forward, um, because they've had a chance to uh, sort of think through, um, also looking at strategic investment, which I can't say too much about, but that's obviously a, a big factor that we're, we're working on now, now that we've had that resource in place and we've de-risked uh, the project. And then finally, uh, as mentioning, you know, looking to create value with our non-core assets, doing something clever. Uh, through like by way of a, uh, of a sale or merger with our, our gold portfolio. So th those would be the big things we're working on right now. And then as mentioned, you know, we're also going to begin trading on the venture exchange. And the reason you want to do that is it just provides better access to institutions and trading in, in Europe and the U.S. Got it. Okay. Greg, how can people get in touch with you if they want to be uh, an investor in PTX Metals? What's your stock symbol? And um, yeah, how do they uh, find you? Uh, give me your website. Yeah, the website is uh, ptxmetals.com. And uh, yeah, we trade in Canada under the symbol PTX, about a 12 to 50 million market cap. And there's quite a bit of liquidity. So they, you know, it's, it's fairly easy uh, to buy the stock. And then same thing in the U.S. Uh, under PNPANXF. As well, we have uh, fairly good liquidity there as well on the uh, OTC uh, markets. Excellent. I will put a link to you in the show notes on both uh, the YouTube channel as well as the podcast, as well as uh, provide your tickers. Greg, I want to thank you so much for taking the time uh, from with me today, and love to have you on again. Yeah, thanks, Andy. I appreciate it, and uh, look forward to coming back in a few months. Excellent.